Excel formula to extract columns from a table? That's what we'll learn how to do in this video. Now we're going to see three examples. Here's our data set, and our goal is to extract first email and phone. In any version of Excel, we can use the index function. Now the array, those are all the possible columns we want to look up. Now this is an Excel table, so to highlight the interior of the table, I point to the upper left-hand corner, and when I see my black diagonal arrow, I click comma. Well, for row number, I'm going to need to, as I copy the formula down, get 1, 2, 3, and so on. So we use our formula number incrementer, rows. Now I'm sitting in J5. So I'm going to type J, that's the column reference, and lock the row reference 5 with the dollar sign. And then colon, the second reference will not be locked. As I copy this down, it will be an expandable range, giving me the numbers 1, 2, 3, and so on. Comma. The column number, well, we need to look up using the match function, the column name, comma. The lookup array, when we highlight the field names in an Excel table, we get the table formula nomenclature for the column header names. We're doing exact match, so comma zero. And match will report the relative position of that field name as two. So now we have the full table, the row number, and the column number. Now, we, I forgot, lookup value, that needs to be locked when we copy down. But when we move to the side, it needs to move to the next field name. So we hit the F4 key one, two times. Now we come to the end, close parentheses, and that's our formula. Control Enter, copy it down, then copy it to the side. And in the last cell, I'll hit the F2 key. All the cell references are working. And there we have extracted one, two, three columns. Now that formula will work in any version. But if we have Office 365, there's a better formula. Let's collapse the first example. It's a little bit easier. And we'll see two different methods, one to spill each column individually, and then one to spill them all from a single cell. Now we start our formula the same. And when we type a comma in row number, if we leave this argument empty and we're extracting a single column, row number's argument will know to get all the rows. We type a comma to skip that argument. You can also put a 0 there if you want. And then for column number, since we're in Office 365 and we want exact match lookup, I'm going to use X match. The default is exact match. We're going to look up the field name, but we don't have to lock it because this formula will spill the whole column, comma. We'll highlight the same field names, close parentheses. And now we have the full table, all the rows, and the column number from X match, close parentheses. And when I Control Enter, that spills. And I only have to copy the top cell to the side. In the last cell, I hit F2. That's pretty amazing. Now, when we're using Office 365, you can see the formula there. But all of the formulas below are grayed out because they don't really live there. They're just spilling there. Now, we can do this one better. We can do a single cell that spills both directions. We start off the same. And I would like to leave this empty, but we're going to have multiple row numbers and multiple column numbers in the same index formula to spill a full table. And you have to put all the column numbers and all the row numbers, or else this trick doesn't work. Well, we need a sequence from 1 to however many there are. So we use one of the amazing Office 365 array functions, sequence. How many rows do we want? Well, we'll count how many rows there are. And watch this. I'm going to type EM. I see Employee Table, Tab, then a square bracket. And I'm going to pick the first column, the ID. Close square bracket, close parentheses. That's the only argument we need, rows, because the default is 1 and the step is 1, close parentheses. If I were to highlight this and hit the F9 key, but guess what? My F9 key is not working. So I have to do it the old fashioned way, up to formulas and calculate now. There we can see 1 to 10, which is exactly the array we need to tell index to simultaneously get all those rows. Control Z, comma, and for column index, we'll use X match. And guess what? We're going to do a function argument array operation. 
I'm going to give it all three items, comma. And there's the employee. And I'll arrow down to pound headers. And that's all we need for match, close parentheses, because the default is exact match, close parentheses. And match is going to simultaneously deliver the three relative positions of these field names. So if I highlight it, and I fixed my F9 key in F9, 2, 5, 6. That is amazing. Control Z. Now we can simply hit Enter. And the entire table, all 10 rows, columns 2, 5, and 6 are being delivered. And if I was to change this to last, just like that, the formula for extracting those columns updates. Now here's your bonus formula. We're going to go over to the sheet, New Sheet. And this trick, I just want to get the entire table from that other sheet. Equals EM, Tab, and to get all the field names, square bracket, and we'll down arrow to pound headers. When I close square bracket, because that's delivering multiple items and they're already horizontal when I hit Enter, the field names spill. Now this is even better. Equals EM, that's the whole table tab. That's it. When I hit Enter, it grabs the whole table. And it's completely dynamic. If I insert a column or add a new row, back over here, there's the new column, there's the new row. All right, here's bonus formula number two. Why not just do it instead of one, two steps? There's the full table, square brackets, and pound all, close square bracket. That gets the field names and the full table. All right, bonus number three. And this is a practical tip. Now the question is, why wouldn't we just use this formula that spills the whole table every time? rather than this that only spills one column at a time? Well, the answer comes from whether or not you want to access individual columns. If this were a lookup table or something like that, we could just refer to the whole table. But what if we wanted the left and we wanted to try and use the spill operator? That's the pound. Well, it won't work because the formula only lives in the upper left corner. So if we wanted to access that column, we'd have to do it the old-fashioned way, which might be OK. But if we knew that we wanted to access individual columns, now because a formula actually lives there, when I do the pound symbol, boom, close parentheses, hit Enter, and it spills. All right, if you like that video, be sure to click that thumbs up, leave a comment, and subscribe, because there's always lots more videos to come from Excel is Fun. And if you want to check out a full playlist with videos all about dynamic arrays in the new Office 365, check out this playlist.